Hello, I'm now at ETCM Glen Mary. It's exciting here today, electrifying one because it's the launch of the all new Nissan Leaf and also it is the media drive of this brand new car from here, Glen Mary, all the way to Bangi and Putrajaya. I'm gonna try out the car, I'm gonna try out this 100% electric car that has this thing called the e-pedal. No idea what that is, but I'm gonna you know, give you a try, I'll tell you all about it later on. Yeah? Flag off! Yes, we just left uh, ETCM Glen Mary. Uh, I wanted to roll it right away so that I can get the first impression, the first feel of the car. And by the way, this is uh, Dennis Wong. Dennis Wong is here to tell you guys all the boring stuff. Later. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> this is a pure electric car. Uh, I believe not a lot of people have this experience with pure electric car. Uh, I was lucky enough a few years back to have the first generation Leaf uh, to experience that and it was freaky. It was freaky because it was quiet, it just it, it, it sound, it, it, it moves quietly but sometimes it sounds like a LRT. Hey, that's quite cool actually. Yeah? What we are driving today is it's actually a pretty serious car, okay? Even though it's a 100% electric car, it is the world's best-selling electric car. More than 400,000 units sold worldwide. That's pretty crazy, right? Yeah, that's uh, including the first generation and the Correct. second generation that we are driving now. Correct. And in, in total, these all these cars have covered about 10 billion kilometers. So Nissan is able to, to capture all this data and study it, study and study it again to make the car even better and better. So. This is not some concept toy car kind of thing. This is a serious product by Nissan. But in Malaysia, well, the price has been announced: one hundred eighty-eight thousand eight hundred eighty-eight ringgit, three years warranty for the car, and free service three years as well. Uh, but the battery pack you get eight years. Yeah, but you have another way of uh, owning the car, which Correct. is through a subscription model, a three-year contract subscription model. Imagine that to be something like a Netflix or your Spotify. It's like a plan. And yeah. then you can change your car every two to three years. So it's three years and uh, per month it's 3,500. Correct. But uh, to own the car is about 3,200 ringgit. Yeah, per month. Correct. Uh, Idaran Tanjong Moto is also offering 23 days, which is quite, quite oh, fast. Oh, yes, yes, yes. For 23 days, uh, if let's say you only own a leaf and you want to travel long distance over your holidays, you have access to uh, 23 days. Uh, you can choose either a Navara, uh, a Serena, or uh, Xtrip. Correct. So, uh, so for your ho local holidays, uh, if you really opt to have a electric car for the entire time, then you can then uh, go back to Tanjong and ask for a free car. For yeah. The first for the years. first three years of uh, ownership of the Nissan Leaf. Now, speaking of a serious car, right? Do you know Nissan started building electric car since 1947? Then, 60 years later, they came up with the first Leaf. So, in 1947, they already had this car called the Nissan Tama. It's a product of results from shortage of fuel, petrol at that time. So, they came up with the electric car. They've been very innovative. They came up with the electric car and it's been used as a taxi until about 1951. And then, I guess they got the petrol tap came back on again and I think they are the the leader in terms of uh, electric mobility and second in coming in close second will be Renault it's I yeah. suppose yeah it's, and it's of course the same group as well and you have Tesla in US of course oh yes yes yeah. 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 Tesla, Tesla in US yes. is very strong but Nissan is uh, one of the one of the models that uh, I mean the Leaf is one of the models that are sold in the, across the world now let's go into the numbers a little bit more uh, it's got a Actually, it's, it's the, the, the size of the battery is the same in terms of, I mean, the physical size of the battery is the same as Correct. before. Yeah. But it has now got 40 kilowatt hour battery. So it's able to produce even more power as compared to 24 kilowatt hour battery as before. Yes. So right now it makes about 150 horsepower. Yeah. So imagine a, a, a fuel tank, which we don't have a fuel tank. So the equivalent is a battery capacity. Yeah. So the battery capacity is improved by 60%. Correct. And the range has been improved by 60% as well. Correct. But the same size battery, so you have the same amount of leg room. Correct. So this car makes 150 horsepower, 320 newton meters of torque, which you can get it instantaneously. And the range from a full charge battery will be 311 kilometers. 
thereabout. Yeah. And previously it was 195 kilometers, so you get quite a bit from this car. Yeah. Um, zero to 100, uh, I don't think it's very important, but it's 7.9 seconds if you want to know. And the top speed is limited to 150 kilometers per hour. 55, 155. 155 because yes. um, EVs tend to use more energy uh, yeah. to go fast. Uh, EVs actually use less energy in town. So yeah. Nissan has put in a, a limiter so that it limits its top speed as 155. But why do you need to go more than 155? Right? Yeah, correct. In terms of the looks, right? As before, it was a bit, it was a bit quirky. It's a bit bubbly with a bug yeah, eye design. Not everybody it looks futuristic, know. somewhat. Yeah, it was it divided opinions. Yeah, right? uh, some people like it. Some people really. It's got a bit of that platypus kind of look, you know, <laughs> the front. Yeah. Uh, but now, now it's entirely different. It, it looks like a normal car. It, it blends in like just any a car. And, yeah. and the new Miz, uh, Nissan design language is actually pretty. Yeah, nice. and, and looking straight at one, which uh, which yeah. has the dual tone roof, roof, yeah. and the boomerang uh, shape tail lamps. Yeah. I think it's actually quite quite sporty looking. Yeah. Surprisingly. Yeah, um, I think that the only futuristic looking thing of the car would be the diamond inspired holographic <laughs> grill, <laughs> which is not actually a grill. It's just a panel because it doesn't really need cooling from the front. Yeah. It, there's no engine or radiator in front. Exactly. So that's that's I guess that's the most EV looking thing of the car. Yeah. And of course it doesn't come with the uh, exhaust outlet because uh, it's Correct. zero emission, right? The interior, it's not as futuristic as well. I think the the only thing that uh, came from before that looks a bit more futuristic would be the drive, drive selector, selector yeah. which is like a mouse thingy and uh, it, it has this blue accent around it which is quite nice. Yeah. And uh, it's uh, there is a digital and analog combo meter cluster as well. Correct. So you get this. Um, Okay. Electric rev meter, some consumption watts, meter, and also yeah. and so also the range remaining range. Speaking of range, I have two hundred twenty one km um, now. Yeah, and uh, let, let's see how how much range we have left after today's uh, yeah yeah drive. So it's at ninety two percent. So I have two two, two one km. The very new thing apparently is the world's first is the e pedal. Okay. Now this is the exciting yet. Boring part. Now let me tell you the exciting part <laughs> first. <laughs> then you continue with the boring part. Yeah. So the exciting part about it is you can accelerate, decelerate, and even brake by using by using just the accelerator pedal. It sounds pretty weird, right? Because you do not. So once you flick this uh, e pedal function on, you do not work on. You don't have to work on the brake unless it is needed. Yeah. So you just accelerate and even stop the car by just releasing the accelerator. So it's a bit like playing with a remote control car. That's right. I, I hope you remember how how it's like. You, you just push on to the accelerator, and when you when you release it, the car, the, that, that little toy car, will just then slow down. It's a bit like that. I've not tried it it's because it sounds a bit scary. So let me just give it a go now. I just flick um, e pedal. It's on. Right away, the car slows down. Yeah. Basically, okay, it feels like weird. it feels like engine braking, even from, from engine braking. Correct. Yeah. So, but no engine actually. Yeah. So. Okay, I'm on, I'm, I'm, I'm on the accelerator because I need to catch up to the convoy. Now I'm going to let go. It, it breaks. Yeah. In fact, the, the brake light will come on. The brake light will come yeah. on. <clears throat> the whole point is to activate regeneration of energy. Yeah. So that you can recover more energy as you drive, uh, as compared to when the e-pedal is not on. And it's funny, right? We, we talk about missing three pedals. Yeah. Now we may be talking about missing two pedals. And just to one pedal. Yeah. So it, it actually takes a while for you to get used to it. I'm modulating between pressing and, 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 and releasing and I really do not have to even touch the brake. It's weird. Yeah. It's weird. It would be pretty interesting if you were to drive up Bukit Tinggi with this car. Though. Yeah. Right? Without having to yeah. touch the brake, that's, yeah. that's, that's quite interesting. The regen, regen is done by, by the electric motor, yep. not by the brakes. So um, if you actually get used to e-pedal and you use it often, mm. so your brake wear will be a lot less and then you recover more energy and quickly. One very good benefit of this thing would be when you are crawling in the slow traffic. When you're used to it already, you don't actually have to shuffle between the accelerator and the brake. So yeah. that would help a lot. Yeah. Somewhat to you know to just focus on one pedal. From the moment I started this uh, this function until now, I have not touched the brake, which means I'm saving on my brake pads. Exactly. We have to change brake pads often. 
And actually, after the initial uh, moment, a couple of minutes ago when you did this, yeah. actually I'm starting to feel it's actually quite quite natural. Right, right. right. So it's I'm getting, it's getting smoother. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. well done. Wow. Well. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, GC Ma is learning how to drive today, a different type of... Uh, With handle. one pedal. And, and I think this, this will be carried on in, um, in other EV cars. Uh, I, I, I believe the Honda E also has something of the same thing. Right, 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 right. It's, 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 it's actually quite intuitive once you get used to it. So, e-pedal, it's, it's the future. Do you feel like you want to turn it off? No, that's the funny thing. But, but, ah. but the thing is, I've been going like around 70 km per hour, 100, yeah. 70, 100. So, We're doing about 100, right? Right, so I, I'll, I have to do like slow traffic and then just give it a go in a bit. So once you once you step on the accelerator, there's, there's almost no more uh, braking, right? There's no more retardation. You, once you're on the accelerator, it's smooth like as, how you... As, as normal. As, as normal. As okay. normal. As normal. Yeah. And even on park throttle, it's... Uh, yeah, just that you don't you. The thing is, you you're not able to cruise. Right. That's the that's the the, the counterintuitive thing. When right. you are in a normal car, you you let go of the accelerator and it cruises. Right. And okay. you save fuel somewhat, right? You yeah. just cruises and then you slowly brake and you stop the car later on. Yeah. In, 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 whereas this, you just really need to play with the the, the pressure on the accelerator. Mm. You don't get to cruise. That's that's the difference between yeah. it's a normal car. As in coasting. Coasting. Yeah. 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 So. So leaf off coasting yes. uh, would would not be available anymore in, uh, with e pedal, but you have the option of turning on and turning off e pedal. That's the great thing about it. Correct. And it's quiet. All we hear is actually just wind noise and uh, kind of you talking on the walkie. Road and, and <laughs> road is our lead. And road <laughs> noise yeah, from the tires. Yeah, look, I'm you're not breaking, right? No, I'm not breaking. So, it's so the tire. Okay, let's let's try to do. Let's try to come to a. Okay, hop. I can't. Okay, okay. I so yeah, it's quite a distance oh, yeah, in front. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta train your feet. Correct. <laughs> you can stop. Okay. To move again, just touch it a little bit and go again. Very nice. Yeah. I think that's what it feels like if you are an MRT driver or an LRT driver. I'm sure there's. I don't it, think it works something a, like that. Is there, is there a, they are all electric. Is there an MRT driver these days? Yeah. I think I think it's unmanned. Correct. I could be wrong. Right? Correct. Yeah, it's unmanned. Yeah, it's not. It's all okay. Okay, now that we have turned off the highway and uh, we are in this trunk road with traffic lights and all that, I'm, I'm still on e pedal. I have not touched the brake from the time I turn it on from the highway. Okay, red light. Just need to ease it off and it's yeah. ease it off completely and stops. And do you see, Ma, now doesn't know how to go back to his uh, exactly. combustion engine This car. thing rocks! It's like, really? The brake pedal will not even wear off! And of course, at first EV has fewer components. It doesn't have uh, engine oil, transmission oil. Correct, you don't have to worry no about all that. No air filter, no oil filter. So, already the maintenance of an EV is already about 40% less than a combustion engine car. And things like wipers and brake pads. So now brake pads also they can save. Correct. So I, I really don't know how I can go back to my car. I yeah. have to, you know, having to work between two pedals, it's it's yeah. a chore, you become a chore. And by the way, the battery sits on the floor of the car, so you got a very low center of gravity. So this car is quite nimble in a way when you just throw it around corners. Yeah, and, and, the, and the great thing is that because the, the battery pack sits on the floor, mm. the trunk doesn't have any battery cells. It's actually 435 liters, yes, which is quite, quite amazing. A lot. 435 a lot. liters, if I'm not mistaken, is... Yeah. It's more than some small crossovers. Yeah. A uh, Golf, a Volkswagen Golf has 380 liters. So it's already bigger than a normal size hatch. Yeah, and if you put the seats down and all that, you get over a thousand, over a thousand, thousand yeah. hundred plus uh, yeah. liters. Yeah, it's something like that. Okay, so now we are at Nichikon Bangi. They are the manufacturer for semiconductors and they also make quick charges for Malaysian market and in Japan as well. So they have about 20% market share in Japan, so they are pretty big. So what's happening here is the organizer has uh, arranged for a Nissan Leaf to go against a Nissan 370Z Roadster for a drag race. Now let's put things into perspective. Yeah, the Nissan Leaf has got 150 horsepower with 320 newton meters of torque. That 3.7 liter V6 makes 350 horsepower and 374 newton meters of torque. Which one's gonna win? Let's find out. Hey, siapa akan menang? Siapa menang? 
Exciting behavior. Yeah, Exciting day in Nichicon today. No. No way. No way. How can? This doesn't make sense. The three times Z is like it's about 374 Newton meters. Well, the note and the leaf is uh, 320. Yes, but it's lighter, I believe. It's lighter, instant torque. Well, of course, the V6 is uh, it takes a while to to get its uh, momentum going. We need to try ourselves. Okay, it's our turn. Dennis okay. driving. Two, one, go. Dramatic but really fast. Yeah. No engine noise. But it's fast. I could only hear the 270Z. Yeah. That's that's the only drama. Yeah. Okay, now done with the drag race. Uh, another interesting fact about this car is that it has got bi-charging feature, which means you can charge the car and then the car is able to let you have the charge as well. In other words, you can actually charge up your house. You can power up your house using the battery in the car. This 40 kilowatt hour battery um, will allow you to, on average, power up a house, an average household, for almost four days. Four days. So in Japan, where they are prone to natural disaster and all that, they use a Nissan Leaf or cars of such a kind to actually charge up or, or power up their houses, charge their phones, their laptops and all that. Now this is a demonstration of it. So from this car over here, so what it's doing is it is discharging the power from the battery into this power mover over here, which is made by Nichicon. So what it does is, is it works like a converter. So it draws out the power from the car, from the battery, convert it into AC power. So basically, whatever that is in the battery is DC power. It's, when it comes out, it converts it, it goes to AC power. And it is used to charge up phones, laptops, and even ice kacang. Is this ice kacang? Yes. It's ice kacang, look. So this is powered by the car over there. So if you're in need to make ice kacang, if you need to have ice kacang, you can have a Nissan Leaf and make your ice kacang when there's, you know, power shortage. So now the car comes with two different charging ports. This is the normal charging port and that's a quick charging port. So coming from that quick charger over there, which is 50 kilowatt, it only takes about less than an hour to charge up the car fully. So if you use a wall mount, which is supplied with the car for free by EPCM, it takes about seven hours to fully charge the car. But with this quick charger over here, a 50 kilowatt charger, it charge up the car in less than an hour, which is great. So as of now in Malaysia, there are three uh, different chargers, quick chargers of such kind. So there's one here, which is at Nichikon Bangi. And there's one at ABD Malaysia in Subang near Sunway. And there's one more at the uh, Aikoro r, &R uh, next to the highway. So. With such quick charges, it makes sense. It makes sense to charge up the car in less than an hour and you're good to go again. So basically, if you can drive to Ipo, but there's no quick charger in Ipo, drive to Ipo, quick charge it, and then you move up to uh, Penang again. So that's possible. But for now, there are only three in Malaysia. Yeah, we look forward to have more of such quick chargers in the country. So the difference between a normal charger, which is a 6.6 .6 kilowatt wall mount charge that you can have at home, is that it supplies AC into the car. So the normal wall mount at home is supplies AC into the car, then the car needs something like a, a transformer or a charger to, to then switch it to DC to charge the battery. While these quick chargers, Whatever comes up from here, it is already DC. So whatever that goes in there, it goes straight to the battery without having to go through the charger or the, the converter, right? So this is more direct and it goes straight into the power, takes less than an hour. Okay, we have just ended up in Trujaya and we are going for a cruise. Tea time with us.
So it has been quite a pretty interesting day today. We had a Q&A session with uh, ETCM. Um, got a few pretty interesting uh, info from them. One yeah. of it is how the car is being taxed. Yeah, so <clears throat> I think a lot of people is going to say, oh, 188,000 is a little bit expensive. But uh, we were told, and I think you can check it out yourself, um, the price of the leaf in Malaysia is cheaper than in Singapore. It's cheaper than in Hong Kong without their government rebates. And uh, it's also cheaper than in Australia. So the prices that we get uh, at this point in time does not attract the same kind of excise duty and import duty like a normal CBU car from Europe, for example. So uh, what was explained was that um, for the LEAF, there's a Japan Free Trade Agreement, so import duty is zero. And there is a special tariff code for electric car in existence for quite a few years already. And that is tagged at 10%. So 10% plus the 10% sales tax, SSD, yeah, and that makes 188,000 obviously with margins and, and cost of importing. Yeah, so in a way, we are only paying about 20% of tax. To, yeah, yeah. So which which also tells us that uh, this car is actually not cheap mm. in cost. Mm. Um, obviously, EV still has a long way to go. Yeah, it still has uh, a, a lot of uh, cost uh, optimization over time for the battery. Tax. Mm. It is getting cheaper and cheaper, but um, we have still not reached a critical mass where uh, the cost of battery is going to be cheaper than uh, a combustion engine. Not yeah. yet, anyway. Yeah. But we are close. We're getting very close. Correct. So another thing would be the road tax. How is it calculated? Um, <clears throat> uh, based on what uh, ETCM has uh, told us, uh, currently the road tax is based on the motor output. So right now, uh, 110 kilowatts. Uh, is equivalent to a slightly over two litre uh, tax road tax for international version. Yeah. Uh, so basically, the road tax is about four hundred ringgit, but again, there is a rebate or a discount for electric cars. Yeah. So right now, the road tax for this car is about hundred eighty ringgit, which is not again bad, reasonable. Not bad. Yeah. yeah. We started off with around 90% of uh, battery charge. Yeah. After the entire day of driving and all that, we have got 61% left. That's a lot. Uh, That's we, a lot. Even though we are stuck in a, a jam at the highway. Yeah, and uh, it's a, we have got a range of 151 km. It's not too bad. We started off with 22 something km and now yeah. with 151 km. Actually, not too bad. So, let's just summarize this. Um, very interesting day. It, it is a very unique car is that there, there is a unique way of driving it which is using just one pedal uh, I think Dennis got a, a very good experience with it as well and do you like it uh, it surprised me um, uh, like I say when when I read about it I thought the concept was a bit iffy mm. in that uh, how will somebody get used to it how long will it take for someone to get comfortable with not pressing on the brakes but it turned out to be really easy to use and uh, it took me maybe 10 kilometers to get used to actually not having to step on the bricks. Okay, so that's it for today. Um, we look forward to have a full review of this car soon. Uh, if you want to find out more about this car, please just go try it out in the nearest Nissan showroom because the e-pedal experience is really unique. Yes. If you want to read out more about this car, do log on to autobus.my. I guess that's all for today. Ciao, ciao.